Hi, I'm Jay Mings, and today's video is of the last weekend of our stay in Mexico. We're going back to the Philippines in the middle of the week and we expect our remaining schedules to be very, very hectic. So, for this day, we visited as many places as we could. So we started off by visiting the historic center of Mexico City again. This time, the national flag of Mexico is flown on the flagpole. Fun fact, the national flag of Mexico was actually the biggest flag flown back in 2011 until 2017, where it was replaced by the national flag of UAE. Currently, according to the Guinness World Records, the biggest flag flown is the national flag of Egypt. Now. Upon research, I'm actually not sure if this particular flag of Mexico is the previous title holder, but what I am sure of is that it is really huge and is the biggest flag that I've seen so far in my life. This time, while in the historic center of Mexico City, we visited the Mexico City Metropolitan Cathedral or the Metropolitan Cathedral of the Assumption of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary into Heaven. I know, it's a mouthful. <laughs> Anyway, upon entering the main cathedral, we are greeted by the Altar of Forgiveness. And apparently there is another altar, the Altar of the Kings, but we weren't able to get close to it since there was an ongoing mass. So access at the time is a bit restricted. We also went to the Metropolitan Tabernacle, which is another church built beside the Metropolitan Cathedral. Overall, I find the cathedral's layout very interesting, but I do have a few questions like, why does it have a church beside it? Is there a need for another church? Why does it have two altars? What happens when there's a mass going on in both altars and the adjacent church at the same time? Or is it even possible for this to happen? Well, I wasn't able to get an answer to those questions since we're only there for a short while and now on to the next destination. After visiting the Metropolitan Cathedral, we went to its side where there were some modern-day Aztecs that were either performing or doing a ritual, I don't know which one. A few meters from them are the ruins of the main temple of Tenochtitlan, the capital of the Aztec Empire. We got a glimpse of the history of this place back in the National Museum of Anthropology, but by visiting this site, we get an idea of how much has actually changed since then, especially since in this place, there are three scale models, one for the basin of Mexico, one for the city of Tenochtitlan, and one for the sacred present where the most important political religious buildings of the Aztecs are found. You may have noticed that behind the scale models is a ruin. That is the ruins of what Spaniards called Templo Mayor or Main Temple in English, while in the Nahuatl language, it's called Huey Tocali. I hope I pronounced it right. It means Great Temple. Now, you may wonder, why is this so-called Great Temple built underground? The answer is that it was actually built above ground, and when the Spaniards conquered the Aztecs, they decided to deconstruct their buildings and bury the sacred presence. They then built a colonial city on top of it with a church placed near the top of the Great Temple. There's actually a museum, Museo del Templo Mayor, below the scale models, which we didn't go to. If you want to visit this place, then I highly recommend going to the museum to learn more about its history and see the artifacts of that time. Now, moving along, after visiting the ruins of the Great Temple, we walk along downtown Mexico City, and there, we suddenly encountered a huge crowd wearing white and going to Zocalo or the main plaza. Turns out that there was, as I understand, a scheduled protest in that day, and maybe it's the reason why the big Mexican flag is present. Anyway, in downtown Mexico City, we also came across this Coca-Cola store where they have different Coca-Cola merchandise and flavored drinks. Pretty cool! Afterwards, we arrived at the Palacio de Bellas Artes or Palace of Fine Arts. We got lucky that there was a show that was about to begin that day, so we were able to go inside and check it out. There's a souvenir shop on one end and a bookstore on the other, and the inside is so pretty which reminds me of the cultural center of the Philippines. It's just a shame that we're only allowed near the entrance without paying. It would have been cool to see more of what's inside and on the different floors, but alas, we had to go and have some lunch. So we went to a nearby mall. I'd say this is a pretty decent sized mall considering that I'm used to the big malls in the Philippines. After having lunch, we are now on the way to buy some souvenirs in Mercado de Artesanas La Ciudadela. If you're in Mexico City and want to buy souvenirs for your loved ones, then this is the place for you. I highly recommend it. They have clothing, accessories, silverware, ref magnets, you name it, they have it, probably. 
I think we spent over an hour just browsing and buying stuff. I actually forgot to record most of it, so I'm sorry for the lack of footage. Anyway, I managed to finish shopping earlier than my companion, so I decided to explore this park in front of La Ciudadela. It's a pretty nice and small park with a monument dedicated to Jose Maria Morelos, one of the leaders of the Mexican War of Independence. While there were people dancing on the other side of the road, I walked around the park and began to think about how this Mexico trip has been. Before coming to Mexico, I was worried. After all, this was my first trip outside the country without any family members accompanying me. I know my co-workers are with me but they also have some stuff to deal with and I don't want to be a bother to them. So I did my best to research and prepare myself for this trip as much as I can. Weather looks fine. Elevation is high. Temperature, cold, language, Spanish, Mexicans, welcoming, hotel, Chiva. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Anyway, after being in Mexico for a month, I can say with all my heart that it was such a great experience. The people were very friendly and they would always be excited to show us a lot of things, go to a different places and make us eat a lot of food. Thank you so much guys. The different places and houses we came across were very pretty and colorful. The weather was so nice and cold that I didn't miss the very hot weather in the Philippines for even a second. I think the biggest challenges for me were the low humidity and the language barrier. Because of the low humidity, my skin felt dry for almost the entire month even though I was putting a lot more lotion than usual. And for the language barrier, Mexico's official language is Spanish and I don't know Spanish yet. I am very thankful for the people who helped me out for the people who helped us out during our stay. I was able to learn a lot of different things from Mexico's culture and history to everyday life in Mexico. And in my opinion, it's basically just like the Philippines. The only significant difference is that Mexico is cold, dry, and Spanish. In a good way, okay? <laughs> and also maybe their houses have a lot more color. I was actually more surprised about the similarities than the differences, which makes sense since the Philippines and Mexico have a historical connection. And since the Spanish era, we've been exchanging our resources, our people, and our culture. If I have the opportunity to go back to Mexico in the future, I would be more prepared. I would try to learn more about their culture, visit more places, and try to experience a lot more things. It was an amazing experience after all. I thank you all from the bottom of my heart, to the people who made this trip possible, to the people we've met and interacted with, and to you guys for watching this series. I hope there will be a next time. Muchas gracias! Hasta luego!